Brilliant. Hey, t- tell us about the um, the upset that you you sprung at the Sea Games. Well, I mean, everyone felt that there were two favorites: uh, Eduardo Buenavista from the Philippines, who had run a two eighteen marathon, and he's a r- veteran. He's got what nine Sea Games gold medals, like once in the marathon, like three times in the five k, twice in the ten k, another like three times in the steeplechase. He still holds the Sea Games record in the steeplechase, and like he's this small. He's like. 1.51 <laughs> um, and then there's Buntong Sirisong from Thailand who had won five SEA Games gold medals and then you had me who was my first SEA Games and you had a guy from Myanmar who was the defending silver medalist and like, I'm going there and I'm wa- looking around at the start line I'm like man these are all the guys I watch on television right <laughs> and now I'm like alright like, time to go against these guys so what really helped was that I was on home soil so I, I stuck to the pace on my Garmin watch. I went out there. I'm like, I'm going to run this pace. doesn't matter. Like, who's going to go what pace? I know I can't handle anything more than this pace. So I'm really glad that I had just had the maturity on that day to stick to one plan because Buena Vista and Sirisong went out hard. They were running like 220 marathon pace in Singapore's heat and humidity. So, I mean, they, it, was, it, it was demoralizing to see them go further and further away. But at the same time, like, I knew that if they went, if they ran away from me and won, like kudos to them, you know, like you ran two twenty in Singapore, I can't do that. But what I could control was my own performance. So I controlled my own performance. At ten kilometers, they started pulling away. At fifteen k, they had a forty three second gap on me. I could, I knew because the Singaporean crowd were shouting into my ears as we mm-hmm. ran past them, like forty three seconds. I'm like, all right, that's getting a little bit. Big. Um, started to pick it up slightly, not too quick. Just like I ran maybe a eight minute two point four kilometers to try and bridge the gap, like eighty, like. Uh, 320 per K pace and I saw that they were coming back really fast and when I caught up with them I saw that Eduardo Benavista was like, he was done gone yeah he was done he, the heat maybe I got to him maybe he had some other issues I'm not sure but as soon as we caught up with him he dropped and it was just the thigh myself and a guy from Vietnam and like that was the way it stayed so Buntong Sirisong has a really really strong finishing kick he can run the last lap of the 10,000 meters in 58 seconds Mm-hmm. And that is amazing speed. I can't do that in practice. <laughs> like a 400 meter intervals, like I can do them 20 times. I can't do a 400 meter mm-hmm. in 58 at the end. Um, but Sirison can. And and um, he's, as soon as he saw that Buena Vista, the 218 man, had dropped off, he slowed the pace down. He wanted to make it tactical. He wanted to save up his speed for the end. For the end, right? Yeah. And he's like, strong there. Yeah. And like for me, I'm kind of in between the two of them. Like I, I felt that I could outkick Buena Vista. I couldn't outkick Sirisong, but Buena Vista was stronger than Sirisong, and now like, I was kind of caught in between. Now I was, I was being lured into a tactical battle. I'm like, okay, shit. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be slow until the end. I need to save up all the energy I can get. And, like, do I try and go from ten kilometers out and burn the, the kick out of him? Do I go from five k out? Do I catch him by surprise at the end? Like, and the weather was just so terrible on that day. Like it was hot and humid for an hour, and then it started to get really, really cloudy. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as it got cloudy the rain came down on us. So we ran to half marathon, the, the halfway point of the marathon, and the rain was virtually like going like sideways with the wind. Like mm-hmm. it, it hurt to open my eyes. We were drenched. And the rain lasted like 20 minutes. And then it was done. And then the wind was still there, but the rain was no longer there. And like I looked down, I could see like, water coming out from my shoes because I was so <laughs> soaked. And the roads were soaked. It was just like, it was not ideal conditions to run fast at all. So that just made the race even slower. And like all this while, like, Buntong was like looking out to his friends like giving the thumbs up like waving to his coach like I was like man he looks so comfortable <laughs> um, but I told myself okay what there's an hour of running to go you just need to stay as relaxed as you can you can't control how other people feel uh, you can control how you feel so I just like tagged along the, the three of us ran as a group I kept checking back because like we were running so slowly I felt that people were going to catch up to us but like, everyone else was like struggling in the conditions as well and the wind was really strong in one direction I didn't want to lead I just tucked in behind those guys and let them do the work we got, we exited East Coast Park, we went to Gardens by the Bay, and that's the last 10 kilometers of the race. And then the last 5K, Buntong, like, he's, he kind of like picked it up a notch. And like, he picked it up a notch, the Vietnamese guy was dropped. So it was just me and him, like, man on man, last five kilometers, and I was just like, I was just like, all right, like, this, you grew up basically watching this guy race, like, he was kind of my idol when I was in secondary school Mm -hmm. and junior college, and like, now I was racing against him, and I was like, oh man, this is crazy. We ran, I saw like my high school, my JC, my junior college coach, Mr. Stephen Quack. I saw like my parents out there, my aunts, the, my friends who all come out to support. And the last one kilometer, you go down Nicol Highway, you turn onto the track, and on the track, you run a 500 meter loop. So one straight away and one left. 
I got into the track and I could feel the ground shaking. There were so many Singaporeans in there, and they saw a Singaporean so cool. like in second place against the against a guy from Thailand, and everyone was stomping their feet, like cheering. And I was like, oh wow, like my the ten years of running just flashed before my eyes, and like I, this moment where I kind of zoned out from the race and just one just like just my whole running career just kind of flashing before my eyes. I see everyone that I know, and and instead of like you know the race is not over yet, like <laughs> refocus. You need to win this race. I tucked in behind him and waited for uh, the bell because I knew that every time I watched him on TV and the bell sounded, he would like unleash a kick 58 seconds in the 10K. But this is the marathon. So I was hoping, like, please don't have the 58 <laughs> seconds in a marathon. I can't do that. He got to the bell. I didn't feel a surge. I, like, he was just going at the same pace. We came into the 300 meters to go mark. I was holding back from overtaking him because I wanted to surprise him at the end. I just waited like 100 meters to go, just take him by surprise and like pray, pray he doesn't like get you back. I was trying to hold back, but I felt myself like drifting next to him. And I looked across to him and his face and he didn't look good. As soon as I saw that, I put down the hammer. I tried to oh, pull away go. as far as I could. And I didn't dare to look back. And the crowd was screaming. I couldn't tell if they were screaming because I was pulling away or screaming because like he was on my shoulder. But with 100 meters to go, I sneaked a look back and I couldn't see anyone. So I sneaked a lot of look back and he was like maybe 30 meters behind. So like I managed to like put down a 31 seconds last 200 meters to, to drop him and like the last 100 meters I just enjoyed it like I looked to my right I saw all my Team Singapore teammates I, I kind of gave them a fist bump like raised my hand in the air like I didn't even know what I was doing it was just all adrenaline you know and then I saw the Indonesian team who was cheering for me as well I had friends on the Indonesian team I gave them gave them a wave crossed the line I gave out this like loud yell this loud bellow I've never screamed in a race before I gave this loud shout at the end of like while from crossing the line and I still don't know like I, I still the last hundred meters is still very vivid in my head I just don't know like there was as if there was someone else running on that day it wasn't me <laughs> and like the last 200 meters was 31.3 seconds I can't even do that in training sometimes and I did that at the end of a marathon after 42k so it's just amazing how much adrenaline can do for you and for me like I want to thank all the Singaporean supporters out there because they made it possible they gave me the energy to produce something I could never ever produce on my own so it's an amazing yeah. story amazing story <laughs> it's you a, hairs on the back yeah, of your exactly. neck <laughs>